Hi, my name is Tim Middleton. I'm a software engineer with the Coherence Development Team here at Oracle. Welcome to this screencast which covers an overview of the Coherence Operator version 2. In this video we will provide an introduction to the Coherence Operator as well as show you a demonstration of some of the capabilities of the operator. What is the Coherence Operator? Firstly, let's define an operator. It's an application-specific controller that extends the Kubernetes API to create, configure, and manage instances of complex applications. The coherence operator is an operator that allows users to create, configure, and manage coherence clusters within a Kubernetes environment. So what does the operator provide? The ability to easily deploy, run, and manage coherence within a Kubernetes environment. Integration with common components using Kubernetes, such as Elasticsearch, FluentD, and Kibana for log capture and analysis, and Prometheus and Grafana for metrics and monitoring. It allows you to define the configuration of the coherence clusters via customer resource definitions, or CRDs. It allows you to override and customize your coherence deployments, as well as declare startup parameters for those deployments. Provide safe scaling out or in via Kubernetes with no data loss. Ensures Coherence is aware of Kubernetes zone information to provide Coherence cluster high availability. Allows you to use persistent volume claims to support active persistence. Provides application code deployments via sidecar container as well as definition of Coherence application roles via the Coherence cluster custom resource definitions. The Coherence operator is required and should be installed via the Coherence operator helm chart before installing any other components. The operator understands the resiliency of the underlying Kubernetes cluster and can be configured to install additional components for monitoring and log capture. After installation, a number of CRDs or custom resource definitions are created, which allow you to create and manage the current clusters by specifying the required roles and configuration in a YAML file. For application deployments, the user builds a sidecar container with resources such as jars and configuration files included in well-known locations. The Coherence Cluster CID is used to define the roles and configuration required for the Coherence application. The application sidecar is deployed and referenced in the Coherence CRD, and resources are added to the class path of the Coherence container at runtime. Application containers can be updated safely by a rolling update, which ensures no data loss. And the application can also be scaled via kubectl by scaling the stateful set, or can be modified using kubectl apply. Coherence Operator 2 introduces the Coherence Cluster and Coherence Role customer resource definitions to easily define and configure a Coherence Cluster. In a traditional Coherence application, there may be a number of storage-enabled members and a number of storage-disabled members servicing proxy connections or applications. In the example shown here, we have six storage roles and three proxy roles. In terms of operational capabilities, logs are sent to Elasticsearch. They are paths based on a well-known coherence log format, and Kibana can be used to visualize those log files. Coherence MBean metrics are scraped by Prometheus and are available to view through a comprehensive list of Grafana dashboards. In this demonstration, we'll use the Coherence demonstration application to showcase the Coherence Operator 2.0 features. We'll install the Coherence Operator, build and install the Coherence demonstration application, scale the application safely, view metrics and log files via Grafana and Kibana, and access management over REST. We are running against Oracle's container engine for Kubernetes on Oracle's cloud infrastructure. You can also deploy against any cloud Kubernetes engine meeting the coherence operator minimum requirements. Firstly, we'll install the coherence operator into the namespace coherence demo NS and enable Prometheus and Grafana integration as well as setting log capture to true. Let's now look at the installed release. And we'll now look at the pods that make up the release. The Docker images for the operator are available on Docker Hub and will be pulled automatically as required. We can see we've got the coherence operator, we've got Grafana and Prometheus, as well as Kibana and Elasticsearch. Let's now start the port forward for Grafana and Kibana.
As we mentioned before, we are using the Coherence demo for this screencast. This application consists of a storage tier to hold cache data, plus a storage disable tier that serves the application code and REST endpoints. We have already cloned the repository from GitHub and set our Maven and JDK environments. We will now run the Maven build to build the code base and create a Docker image which contains all the required application artifacts such as cache config, operational override file and application classes. This Docker image will be specified when we install the cluster. We can now see we have our image created. This has already been pushed to the repository ready for our Kubernetes cluster to access it. Next, let's look at the Coherence Cluster custom resource definition file we will use to create our cluster. We can see that the kind is Coherence Cluster and the metadata.name, which is used as a cluster name, is primary cluster. All configuration elements under the spec are inherited or can be overridden by individual roles. We can see that we have a heap size set to 512 meg for all members, as well as we can specify the image pool secret so that Kubernetes can access password protected Docker repositories. We also expose metrics and management ports, as well as enable metrics, management and FluentD log capture. We also set the cache configuration to be used by all coherence roles. We also specify here the application image to be attached at runtime. The next section is where we define the individual cluster roles. For the coherence demo, we have a storage role of three replicas to store data, as well as a single HTTP role, which will serve the application and join as a storage disabled client. Let's now use kubectl create to create the cluster. Let's now list the pods. We have our HTTP pod and our three storage pods. We can see that there are multiple containers in the primary cluster pods as the secondary one is for FluentD and log capture. We'll wait for both of those containers to be ready. Now that we can see that all pods are ready, let's port forward the HTTP application port. We'll now access the coherence demo application. The Coherence Demonstration application is a mock trading application in which we have positions inserted into the cache across many symbols. There are aggregations being formed consistently across the cluster. We can also see the members that make up the cluster and the distribution of that data across the cluster. Let's now open Grafana and explore some of the metrics that are captured. The main Coherence dashboard is a high level overview dashboard that shows the current state of the selected Coherence cluster. There are a number of drop-down variables at the top of most pages, the main one being the cluster name. As Prometheus could scrape multiple clusters, you are able to choose which one you wish to monitor. There are also some annotation checkboxes, namely show cluster size changes and show partition transfers, which will highlight on any graphs. Also, the top end limit applies to the various tables that will show top end lists, such as top end members, GC time or lowest available memory, allowing you to quickly determine potential issues or bottlenecks. Let's firstly click on the members and we can see that the members are distributed across availability domains for resiliency. Go back to the main dashboard. We can click here to view the many dashboards that are available. Let's select the Services Summary Dashboard. This shows that our service, Federated Case Service, is site safe because it is split across multiple availability domains. We can also see information around caches. So for example, the Trades Cache, and we can drill down and get more detailed information regarding cache index and memory access times and counts, as well as storage details. There are also other dashboards for federation, elastic data, HTTP servers, persistence, proxy servers as well. Let's now take a look at Kibana to view the captured log files. 
we can click on discover and see the log files in raw format or included there are a number of dashboards if we click on the all messages dashboard this shows us all messages across cluster host message levels and threads if you want to drill down we can select for example the warning message level and that will show us only the messages that match that level there are also a number of other dashboards around persistence, message sources, configuration, partitions, network, and errors and warning. Now we will scale the application to six nodes by editing the demo cluster YAML and changing the replicas value for the storage role to six. We can then apply those changes using kubectl apply. We can also see the stateful set rollout status. If we go back to the application, we can now see the number of positions is still 100,000 and we have scaled across to six nodes. Let's now take a look at the pods. We've now got six storage pods. Take a look at Grafana. We can now see we're scaled to seven, which is the six storage pods and the single HTTP pod. If we go in here, we can also see that all of the storage pods are spread across the three ADs, giving us that resiliency. Also, notice in the memory usage graph in the bottom left, we can see the vertical red line, which indicates there has been a cluster size change. Now we will scale down to three members by editing the YAML and applying it. What we'll see happen is this will be scaled down in a safe manner, ensuring that no data is lost in the cluster. We can see we have scaled down to three members and we still have 100,000 positions. Let's take a look at Grafana. We can now see it's scaled back to the three members plus the HTTP member. And if you look at the cache summary dashboard, we'll see there's 100,000 in the trades cache. We go back to Kibana and we look at the partitions dashboard. This shows us information about partition transfers. So you can see there are no partition loss events and we can see the partition transfer messages coming through. Coherence 12214 provides management over REST, which allows you to access and manipulate MBeans from a REST interface. Let's start up the port forward on port 30,000, which is the management over REST port. Now we're going to use Postman, but you could use any particular tool you like to access the management over REST endpoint, which is the port slash management slash coherence cluster. You can see it returns all these links as well as information about the cluster. You can also have a look at services. And in particular, let's look at the Ferrero cache service. and we can see detailed information about the cache service. All this information is taken from the coherence mBeans. We also have the capability to modify mBeans that are writable. This concludes the demonstration. For more information on the coherence operator, please visit github.com forward slash oracle forward slash coherence operator. For documentation, please see the link at the top of the GitHub page. For more information on the Coherence demo and other open source projects, please visit the Coherence community at coherence.oracle.com. Feel free to join our Coherence and Operator Slack channels. Thank you for your time.